In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a custom dialogue using Material Dialogues. So the third party library called Material Dialogues. So I'm going to be building a completely custom layout and then using that layout in the Material Dialogue. And I'm going to be showing you a bunch of other things too. Uh, I'm going to show you how to capture some input from the user, how to save that input from shared preferences, and then also how to set that input into the dialogue itself. So let me show you a demo here of what we're going to be building. So on the screen, I have uh, just an app that has one activity, one layout, pretty simple, nothing fancy. If I click the button, it opens up that custom dialogue that I built. So this is a dialogue that you would theoretically use for filtering in your application. So imagine you have a list of whatever, some kind of a list of data, maybe blog posts, that's what this is actually originally from. And you wanna uh, select some filter options for those, those blog posts. So I can select, you know, maybe I wanna filter by author and then either ascending or descending order. So I'll select ascending and I'll click apply. So then those, those options are now saved to shared preferences. So if I open that dialogue again, notice that it says author and also ascending order. So those, the same thing or what I selected previously was saved. So if I select date and maybe leave Leave it at ascending order, click apply, open it again. Uh, you'll see date and ascending order. So I'll be showing you a couple of things. Like I said, number one is building that custom layout and applying it to a material dialogues dialog, and then uh, how to uh, get some input from the user and then saving that input to shared preferences, and then also setting that input in the dialog itself. So uh, quite a few things. So that is going to be it for the demo. Let's go take a look at the code. All right, so I have Android Studio open here. All I did was create a blank project. So if you want to look at exactly what I'm looking at, just go to new, new project, and select uh, empty activity, and then click next. You wanna use Kotlin and Android X. So now, um, I guess first, actually, we need the dependencies for the Material Dialogues library. I've already got that in my build.gradle file. You can see it's right here, Material Dialogues version 3.1.0. I think there might be a newer version now, but it doesn't matter. Get whatever the newest version if you want or use that version, uh, and then just getting that dependency. And if you just added that, you'll have to click Sync. There'll be a little Sync button up there, and you'll have to sync your, um, yeah, there we go. Look like it. I, I thought there was a new version. I don't know why it took so long to give me the warning, but anyway, there it is. So um, have nothing in here so far, just main activity. I got uh, the layout for main activity and I have a button. So I have a button, wrap content, wrap content. It's got uh, some constraints on it. It's just got a bit of a margin. The text is filter uh, and then the ID is filter dialogue. So actually I should say I do have a couple things in here. If you go into the strings.xml file, I have a bunch of strings in here. Um, so you might want to actually get the source code for this project so you can just copy paste these in easily. So the repository for this project is right here, UI communication with MVI. There'll be a link in the description of this video. So you can just click that and you want to select the branch material dialogues, custom layout. That's the one that I have. And you can copy those strings over if you want. That'll definitely help things. So go into resources, go into values, open up strings.xml and then copy all of those into your project. That way you have them kind of all ready to go. So now before we, we build, we, we build the, uh, we inflate the dialogue, I want to build that custom layout. So I don't want to sit here and do that on video. It's just going to take too long. So I want you to just copy paste the layout from the source code. So copying all of this and so pressing control C on that. So again, just go to the repository, go to resources layout and get the layout file named layout filter. And now I'm gonna open up Android Studio and we can we can post that in or paste that in. So right click on layout, go to new layout resource, and this will be called layout underscore filter. So now I just pressed okay, going over to the text tab. No, I don't wanna add that to get. And I'm going to select all and then paste that in. So there is now our layout. And if you've added all of the strings that I just showed you in the strings.xml file, you should have no issues here. Everything should be everything should be all good. So this is a, a pretty simple example of a custom layout. Obviously, you could customize this however which way you wanted. You could add an image view in here. You could add some more text views, some edit texts, whatever. You could do whatever you wanted. The point of this is that it's a custom layout. So it's totally custom and it's built now. So now we're gonna go into main activity and we'll work on uh, inflating the material dialogue that's gonna use that custom layout. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, create some variables. We are gonna be using shared preferences. So I'm gonna create a shared preferences object. I'm gonna create an editor object. So it's a shared preferences editor. These are gonna be used to share the preferences that are captured from that input. So remember, I'll just bring the uh, 
bring the sample app on the screen here one more time. So remember here we have uh, you know the different filter options with author or date and then ascending or descending order. These values are going to be sh saved to shared preferences. So we need we need shared preferences obviously in our main activity for that. Next I'm going to build a function for initializing the shared preferences. So private fun I'll do just call it uh, init prefs. It'll be preferences preferences equals get shared preferences. I'll call it my prefs and the context mode will be mode private. Now I want to initialize the editor. So editor equals preferences dot edit. And that should be it for initializing our shared preferences. So I'll just call init prefs up here in on create so I don't forget. And now we'll move on to the next function. So the next one is going to be for actually inflating the dialogue. So I'll do private function. Uh, it'll be show filter dialogue. And inside here, we will do everything needed to bring up our new material, our new custom material dialogue. So value dialogue equals material dialogue. We're inside an activity, so we can just use this. Uh, looks like I spelled that wrong. Dialogue. There it is. Now I want to do uh, no auto dismiss. So it's not going to automatically dismiss if I click somewhere other than the dialogue. Just uh, one of the options you can add, one of the many options you can add. Now the custom dialogue requires you to call dot custom view. And then I can reference that new layout that I just built. So r dot layout dot layout filter. And that is actually all you need to do to, to bring it into view other than calling uh, dialogue dot show. So if I did that, then the dialogue would show. But we obviously want to be, we want to um, apply some other options to this. We need to be able to capture the input. We need to be able to set the input from previous values. So we are not going to be doing that. Well, I guess we will eventually. So I'll call dialogue.show now, but then we need to write a bunch of things before we actually show the dialogue. So the first thing is we want to set the initial preferences. So set initial preferences, pref references. So that's going to be the initial values. So like I said, from the demo, uh, we have, you know, the author, we have the date. As soon as that dialogue comes into view, I want to check the shared preferences and set those, those radio buttons accordingly. So that's the first step. Okay. So the first one is going to be the filter. So this is either the author or by date. That's the filter option. So preferences dot get string. The key here for that shared preference is going to be R dot R dot string dot key filter key filter and then the default value is going to be the, the date so I'll actually go to the next line here because we're going to run out of room I'm, I'm assuming so let's go to the next line and we get string R dot string dot filter date that's going to be the default value for that uh, that shared preference now I want to do an if statement so if the filter equals the um, the default value so get string R dot string dot filter date. If it equals that default value, then I want to set the dialog. So dialog, find view by ID. This will be a radio button type. The ID we need to get that import. R dot ID dot filter group is the ID for that because we're we're selecting a radio button, and I want to check the uh, the filter date ID. So filter date. Oh, whoops! I said radio button. This needs to be radio group. There we go. So get that import. So that will set uh, that will set the default value. So otherwise, if it's if it doesn't equal filter date, then I want to set it to the other value. So I'll do dialog find view by ID filter group again, and then this one's going to be filter author. So that'll set the default filter. So now the second one is going to be the order. So I can actually copy this this structure, this whole thing here. It's going to be very similar, uh, but this one is going to be the order. So getting the order, the key here is going to be the order. Uh, the default value will be order ascending if the order equals the default value. So again, this will be following the same kind of pattern here. If it equals the value that we got up there, the default value, then we just set it to that default value. So filter or it'll be order ascending, sorry, order ascending. And this, this group needs to change too. So this is now order group instead of the filter group. So order group. And this will be order descending. So that will be our default values. So now the next step here is going to be uh, capturing input and attaching unclick listeners to the apply and the cancel button of the dialogue. 
So I can set a new heading here that says, you know, uh, get the new preferences. So the first thing here is I want to set an on-click listener to the positive button of the dialogue. So dialogue, find view by ID. This is going to be a text view inside of the dialogue. So getting that import, r.id.positive button. And then I want to do set on click listener and inside of this Lambda now is what's going to execute when I click apply on the dialog. And I'll just kind of remind you again what that looks like. So when I click this apply button, that's the positive button. This is the negative button. So now inside of this on click listener, we want to capture that new input. So the first one is the selected filter. So dialog dot get custom view, find view by ID. Uh, the type here again is going to be the radio group or no, this one will be a radio button because we're, we're capturing it right from, from the, uh, the checkbox itself. So now I'm going to go to the next line to give myself some more room and I want to get the ID of the particular radio group in question. So let's, uh, let's do the same thing. It's going to be similar to what we did up here actually. So I'll just copy this. So dialogue, find view by ID, um, radio group the filter group and then I want to I want to extract this value instead of checking the value so dot checked radio button ID that's what I want and then I want to do the same thing for the order so I'm going to copy this because it's going to be the same kind of process here this is going to be the selected order and in this case though find find it this is going to be the filter filter or sorry the order group order group and I want to get that ID. So that's going to get the value from those two options. So this will be the filter, this will be the order. And now we just need to finish up by saving to shared preferences. So save the new values to shared prefs. So the, uh, we need access to the editor for that. So editor.put string, the key for the filter is just filter. So r.string.key filter. I can save that by going selected filter.text.toString. And then the I want to apply that to the sh to the uh, shared preferences file. So clicking or adding apply to the editor, and then I want to do the same thing with the order. So put string, get string r dot string dot key order, uh, comma, and then selected order text, and then to string. And then I want to apply that to the editor again. So editor dot apply. So there we go, that will save our two new preferences. And then at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, we want to dismiss the dialog. So the last step here is gonna be the positive, or the, sorry, the negative button for the dialog. So dialog, dialog dot find view by ID. This is gonna be a text view. And the ID of this text view will be r dot ID dot negative button, set on click listener. And then inside of this Lambda, I just wanna do dialog dot dismiss. So if they click the cancel button, we just wanna get rid of the dialog. So that's going to be it. So obviously, you know, this is one example of one custom dialog that you could make um, where I just use two or a bunch of different radio buttons. You know, we have the um, we have the author, the date, we have the ascending or descending order, but you could do anything with this. You know, you could add, like I said, an image view, you could add uh, edit text to capture input. You could add buttons even to the dialogue. You could add switches. You could add, add anything. Um, the process would be the same and you would go about either capturing input or setting input the same sort of way that I, sh I showed you in this example. So the, you know, the possibilities are limitless. You could do whatever you wanted. So the, the last step here now is going to be showing this. So I can't remember the ID of this. I think it's like dialogue or something. Filter dialogue. Yeah. Set on click listener. And then we want to uh, show that filter dialog. So at this point we can run it and see if everything is working correctly. So here I have the app on the screen. I'm going to click on filter to bring the dialog into view. Now keep in mind that I've ran this app on this phone before. So there should be default values already there. So don't worry if your values are different than mine than what you're seeing. So uh, I'll select author and descending order. I'll click apply. Now I'll open the dialog again and we have author and descending order. That's good. I'm going to leave it on author and go ascending order. Click apply. Let's see what that does. Author ascending. Yep. And now date, click apply. And there we go. So everything's working correctly. All right. So that's going to be it for the video. Hopefully that was helpful to you. Hopefully now you know how to use material dialogues to build a custom dialogue in your application. Also, just as a heads up, if you didn't know already, this uh, this example is actually from one of my courses on my website. 
Uh, you can go to codingwithmitch.com, and the course that that was from is the Powerful Android Apps with Jetpack Architecture course. So this course is a really great one. It's one of my newest ones. It uh, teaches you a lot of really valuable skills, uh, kind of the the most cutting edge Android stuff you can get. Basically, I I highly doubt if you're watching this video within like a month of me publishing it that you'll find any content that is uh, more that uses more of the new things that Android is doing these days, uh, whether it's, you know, navigation components, so the new way to navigate with fragments, uh, live data and view models, different architectures like MVVM, MVI, um, all the repository pattern, uh, all that kind of stuff, all of this new sort of stuff that Android's been using. So if you're interested in the course, go to the course page and click course demo right here. That'll show you a video of what you'll be learning in the course. And if you're interested in any of the other courses, just head on over to the courses tab here. And you can see uh, I have a wide array of free courses, paid courses. Uh, typically, the paid ones are a little better, but that's not necessarily true. Uh, just kind of, I sort of pick the paid ones at random, sort of, and I make some free ones along the way. So lots of cool stuff there. Make sure to check that out, codingwithmitch.com. I hope you liked the video, and I'll see you in the next one.